In the last section, we spoke a little bit about our first project. We're going to use the Mongoose library to modify our database in some fashion, and then we'll use the Mocha testing framework to make sure that those changes actually took place and that we did the right thing. We're going to use the Mocha testing framework to test out the four most common operations that we'll use whenever working with our Mongo database, creating data, reading it, updating it, and destroying it. Just to be really clear, the Mocha test framework right here is by far the most popular framework for doing any type of JavaScript testing uh, around the Node.js environment. So if you don't have previous experience with Mocha, don't sweat it. We're going to walk through it step by step. Even if you do have previous experience with it, I think that you, maybe you'll appreciate seeing a little bit of the intricate setup that we're going to do with Mocha as well. We also spoke a little bit about our project directory structure. So we're going to have the source file and the test file, or excuse me, source directory and test directory. Let's open up our code editors and create those two folders now and get started on this. So inside of my terminal, I'm going to open up my code editor. I use Atom personally. Uh, if you use any other different type of editor, be it VS Code or Sublime, whatever you like to use, no problem whatsoever, you'll do just A-OK. -okay. The instant I open up my test or my project directory, you'll see that I've got one folder in here already called Node Modules. This folder contains the dependencies that we just installed in the last section. Remember, we installed Mocha, Mongoose, and Nodemon at the command line. One other thing about Nodemon, we'll talk about its purpose in just a moment, but it's something that's going to really help us out when we are running our tests. So we'll come back to Nodemon in a moment. Okay, so in our users directory, I'm going to create a new folder called src, and then another new folder called test. Now inside of test, we're going to start off with doing a list of our test environment setup. So in here, I'm going to make a new file called test underscore helper dot js. Inside of this file, it's customary to place any code that we might need to have to set up our testing environment. And it's certainly customary to call it a name such as test helper. So inside of here, we'll do some initial setup for our tests. Now you might be thinking, Stephen, what, what possible setup could we have to do? Like, what is there to do? Well, that's a good question, one that I'll answer right now. We're going to look at a diagram that's going to kind of give us a handle into figuring out exactly how our code is going to execute when we run a command to test our project. When we run a command to test our project, all of our code will be loaded up and the Mocha library will start up and it'll say, okay, uh, I guess it's my show. I'm running right now and I need to run some tests for this user so they'll see if their code works or not. And that's gonna be our time to run some tests and uh, you know, make sure that we're modifying our database correctly. But before any of that happens, there's a couple of steps in here that we have to get to. First, Mongoose is a JavaScript package. It's just a chunk of JavaScript. There's not really any special behavior about it. In order for Mongoose to work with Mongo, we have to initiate a connection. So there's nothing about Mongoose that's going to automatically say, ah, you have a Mongo database running on your machine. I guess I'll just connect to it. It doesn't do that. We have to explicitly tell Mongoose to connect to our instance of Mongo. Telling Mongoose to connect to Mongo takes some amount of time. It's not like an instantaneous process. We don't just say, hey, connect to this thing, and boom, it just happens. Instead, we have to wait some you know, arbitrary amount of time. We don't really know how long it's gonna take. But the point here is that inside of our test helper file, we're gonna do a little bit of setup code to tell Mongoose to connect to Mongo. And then once Mongoose connects, we're going to check to see if the connection was successful. If it was, we'll go ahead and run our tests. Otherwise, if the connection failed, we'll show an error and stop our tests from running. So that's our plan, this is our goal. This is the initial setup we're going to do inside of the test helper file. Now there is another little bit of setup that we're going to do in there as well, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's focus on just this little bit of connect logic first. All right, so I'm gonna flip back over to my code editor. And inside of here, we're gonna write a little bit of code and then we're gonna talk about what it's doing. I'm definitely a huge fan, well, a very big fan I should say, of making sure that it's really clear exactly what we're putting on the screen. You know, you're never gonna really catch me copy pasting from somewhere else and just tossing it up there and telling you to do the same. 
Sometimes, however, it's really nice to just toss some code up and then take a quick pause and then talk about what it is as opposed to kind of leading into it in a nice way. So this is one of the times where we're going to put a little bit of code on the screen and then we're gonna walk through it line by line and discuss exactly what's going on, okay? So we're gonna do a little bit of typing and then talk about what's happening. At the top, we'll start off by writing a const and we'll say const mongoose equals require mongoose. Now already I just feel myself wanting to tell you exactly what's going on with this line of code, but I'm gonna stop myself. I'm really, this is a lot of self-control I'm exercising right now, just so you know. We're just gonna keep going and we're gonna come back to this line. Next, I'm gonna say mongoose.connect and I'm gonna pass in a very special string to this function right here. I'm gonna say mongodb colon slash slash localhost slash users underscore test. I'm also gonna close my sidebar so you can easily see everything. And I'm gonna end this line with a semicolon. Next, I'm gonna say mongoose.connection. And then we're going to add on two little statements to this thing. So I did not put a semicolon at the end of this line. I'm gonna say once open, I'm gonna add in a fat arrow function and I'll console log out of here, good to go. And I'm gonna add on another statement, a dot on error as a first, as a string as the first argument. And the second argument will be another fat arrow function that will be called with an error argument. And then inside of here, we'll say console.warn. And I'm gonna pass in the string of error and then error, like so. Just to be clear on this last line inside of here, I said console.warn, the first argument was a string of error, and the second argument was the error variable that this function was called with. So I know there's a lot of words error in here floating around. Uh, let's, how about this? Let's change error right here to just warning. Let's be clear. The other thing I want to point out to you is that there is no semicolon on, either's line, on either lines four or five. The semicolon for this entire statement that starts on line four is down here on line eight. Okay, so, ooh, that was painful to type so much stuff without having me telling you what the heck's going on here. Let's take a quick break and then we're gonna come right back and we're just gonna dissect the heck out of this chunk of code. So one quick pause, I'll be right back and talk about this thing. 